Welcome to Digital Learning, an initiative of Directorate of Collegiate Education, Government of Karnataka. Siddhartha by Herman Hess is prescribed for fourth semester BSc Generic English, Bengaluru City University. I am Nandana NG, Assistant Professor of English, Government First Rate College, Maleshwaram, Bangalore. The novel is divided into two parts, part one and part two. So this session, we'll have a critical analysis of part one of the novel Siddhartha by Herman Hess. The contents of the session, learning objectives, session outcome, recap of previous knowledge, key facts, significance of the title, part one, critical analysis, and then recapitulation. The learning objectives, to comprehend the division of the novel, the way the novel is divided, why is it the novel divided that way? That is a very important element here. So once you understand that, the it will lead to further better comprehension of the novel. The key facts, significance of the title, and finally, next, critical analysis of part one, and lastly, the interpretation of four chapters in the part one. Session outcome. At the end of the session, the students will be able to comprehend the division of the novel, the key facts that help us uh, better understand the novel, the significance of the title, critical analysis of part one, and also the interpretation of the four chapters. Let us try to recap what we learned in the previous session. The previous session focused on the six elements of the novel. They are setting, plot, characters, point of view, conflict, and themes. Now let us concentrate on the key facts of the novel. The novel Siddhartha is divided into two parts. Part one has four chapters paralleling the four noble truths defined by Buddha. So that is why the part one has four noble truths and look at the four noble truths there. Dukkha, it means the truth of suffering. Samudaya, the truth of the origin of suffering. Niroda, the truth of the end of suffering. Magga, the truth of the pain to end of suffering. So in the first part, the four chapters more or less go according to these the four themes as expressed by the great noble, uh, great Lord Buddha. Who is the narrator? The narrator is an unnamed narrator who tracks spirit, Siddhartha spiritual progress. Key facts. What are the three stages in Siddhartha? The three parts correspond to the three stages through which Siddhartha passes on his journey to enlightenment. And they are the stage of the mind, the stage of the flesh, and the stage of transcendence. Each of the novel's 12 chapters is divided into two parts. It finds Siddhartha simultaneously facing a crisis and a new beginning in his search. Significance of the title. Always remember the title has great significance. Hesse modeled Siddhartha on the Buddha and the lives of the two figures are similar in many ways. This is a very crucial element to understand the novel. Siddhartha's name itself is the first suggestion of the link between Siddhartha and Buddha. For the historical Buddha, Gautama Sakyamuni also bore the same name Siddhartha. So Lord Buddha also was named Siddhartha and our protagonist of the novel is also Siddhartha. So just because he has a similar name, he doesn't become Gautama Buddha. But then the parallel, the similarities between Lord Buddha or Gautama Buddha and Siddhartha can be seen. And the first similarity is the name Siddhartha. In Siddhartha, the protagonist's life parallels the little that is known of Buddha's history. Buddha's life formed around the three seminal events. These are the three events which defined Lord Buddha, the departure from his father's house, the wasted and frustrating years torn between the pursuit of worldly desires and a life of extreme asceticism. Finally, the determination of the middle path as the only road to enlightenment. So these three phases defines Lord Buddha. After going through all these phases, he reached, achieved enlightenment. Siddhartha also follows this course throughout the novel. He leaves his father, explores several kinds of spiritual teachings and eventually achieves enlightenment. So this is the second similarity between Siddhartha, our hero and Gautama Buddha. In this way, Siddhartha resembles the original Buddha who is both the seeker and sage. Chapter 1 Look at the title, The Brahmin Son. Now, the, in the introductory, sorry, in the beginning of the novel, chapter, the novel opens with Siddhartha in ancient India. He and his best friend Govinda belong to the elite Brahmin caste. 
Siddhartha is a golden boy of his community. Men want to be him and women want to be with him. In the sense, Siddhartha is born in a very destined place. He is belonging to a elite Brahmin caste. And as a result, he belongs to the upper echelon of the caste system. Even though Siddhartha participates in holy sacrifices, meditation practices, and discussions with adult, other revered Brahmins, he is not satisfied. He seeks enlightenment, otherwise known as inner peace, and he feels that he has learned all that he can from his teachers and books. Ritual and formula govern Siddhartha's father's world. Siddhartha is also a part of that world, but then he is unable to adapt himself to that world because rituals and formulas are given more importance. Life in this world revolves around sacrifices and offerings made at certain times, performance of established duties that everyone, even Siddhartha's father, must take part in. So, as a result, the father's world is fixed in the moment. It is rigid in the moment and regulated according to certain accepted guidelines. In times like this, meditation under the banyan tree is the only solution. So, Siddhartha and Govinda sit down and meditate. At dinner time, Govinda gets up, but Siddhartha remains deep in, deep in contemplation. He reflects on the word Om, which means the completion. It is the word that concludes all Brahman prayers. He is thinking about a group of Samanas, wandering ascetics, who once came into his town. Suddenly, a thought occurs to Siddhartha. He leaves the banyan tree and tells his father about his new career path. He has decided to leave house and join the Samanas. As soon as Siddhartha tells his father about his plans to become a Samana, his father gets upset. He leaves the room. But Siddhartha remains in the room, standing in the same position. The following morning, Siddhartha is still standing there. Looking at Siddhartha so determined, his father recognizes it and permits him to go. So Siddhartha meets up with Govinda and they leave to find the ascetics. In chapter 2, the chapter 2 is titled with the Samanas. Govinda and Siddhartha find some Samanas and join them. The cause of suffering is the craving for something that can never be satisfied. Hence, the Samanas believe that enlightenment can be found only through denial of flesh and worldly desires. Siddhartha gives away his clothes, he begins fasting for long periods and eats only once a day when he is not fasting. Through self-torture, Siddhartha aims to completely empty himself in order to identify with the world around him. He engages in a number of feats of strength, please not to be attempted at home there, like standing in the burning sun without water, standing in the freezing rain without an umbrella, standing in a thorny bush, etc. Essentially, he stands until he loses full feeling and escapes himself. The self-denial of the Samanas isn't enough to enlighten him. He joins the Samanas, he, be, he starts living like them, he does whatever they ask him to do. But then his attempts to escape from suffering lead to further suffering and the denial of time roots him even more firmly in the cycle of time. He has learned that timelessness cannot be found apart from the self, rendering the Samanas teaching useless for him. Govinda feels, on the contrary, Govinda feels that they are making progress. Well, Siddhartha doesn't so. If the point of all feats of strength is to lose himself, he argues, he could just as easily lose himself in prostitutes and drinking. Escaping reality is not the solution. He tells Govinda that he will leave the Samanas. This is the first conflict that occurs in the novel, at least in this chapter. Siddhartha and Govinda have spent three years with the Samanas. They learn of a man named Gautama Buddha who has achieved enlightenment. So, Siddhartha has left his father's house. He joined the Samanas, but Samanas' way of life did not help him achieve enlightenment. When Go, uh, Sam, sorry, when Siddhartha and Govinda hear about Gautama Buddha, they decide to leave the Samanas and uh, uh, join Gautama Buddha, who they feel might help him reach enlightenment. Govinda thinks that they should hear the Buddha's teachings. After a while, they decide to leave the Samanas, but it's not that easy. Siddhartha informs the oldest Samana of his decision. The old man gets angry, but Siddhartha hypnotizes him with a powerful glance. The old Samana politely permits him to leave. The confrontation between Siddhartha and the elder Samana suggests that enlightenment cannot come from teachers, but must be realized within a fact. Siddhartha will discover repeatedly on his quest. This is the most repetitive theme throughout the novel. That is, teachers are external forces. They can guide us towards a destination, but ultimately it is we who have to journey there. Govinda is impressed. Siddhartha has learned a lot from Samanas. Govinda argues that Siddhartha could have learned to walk on water if he had continued with the feats of strength. Chapter 3, it is titled Gautama. 
Siddhartha and Govinda arrive in Jitavana Grove to meet Gautama Buddha. They spend the night. In the morning, they are uh, so, uh, sorry, overwhelmed to find a massive crowd gathered to hear the Buddha speak. Siddhartha and Govinda are immediately able to identify the Buddha. He is the godly one among the crowd of the yellow robe men. The Buddha appears endlessly peaceful, quiet and contented. Although Siddhartha feels that, that there is little new information he can learn from Buddha's teachings, he intently studies the Buddha's behavior. The Buddha study teaches all the usual stuff, including the four noble truths and the eightfold path. Govinda is accepted as a follower and he also urges Siddhartha to join him. While Siddhartha recognizes the Buddha's holiness, he believes enlightenment must be experienced, not thought. Again, we can see Siddhartha is not similar on wavelength of thought with Govinda. While Govinda accepts that Gautama Buddha will help him reach enlightenment, he decides to stay with Gautama Buddha. While Siddhartha recognizes that Buddha is a holy person, but then he doesn't feel Gautama Buddha is going to help him in, in anything, but then exp enlightenment is something that he himself must experience. Gautama Buddha cannot teach him that. Siddhartha admires the Buddha's teaching that the world is complete, unbroken chain of cause and effect. However, he doesn't understand the doctrine of salvation and escape from the world if in fact the world is eternally one. Gautama similarly teaches a set of rules. His rules, like those of the Hindus and the Samanas, speak of renunciation as a means of escaping suffering. However, Siddhartha has already realized during his time with the Samanas that he cannot reach enlightenment by teaching the world of the self in the world of the body. That is to say, Siddhartha has realized a crucial point. By escaping the world, we cannot understand the world. The Buddha admits the flaw, but reminds Siddhartha that the goal of his teaching is to relieve suffering, not to describe the universe. Siddhartha realizes that all religions offer specific formulas for reaching enlightenment, just as all teachers offer knowledge couched in terms of their own experiences, so he cannot rely on any individual religion or teacher in search for enlightenment. Siddhartha argues the impossibility of reaching enlightenment via others' teaching. Siddhartha, enlightenment, Siddhartha says, is something a man must do alone. The Buddha smiles and departs. Neither Gautama nor any other guide can teach enlightenment because wisdom must be learned through experience. It cannot be communicated through words. Though Gautama speaks of enlightenment, his efforts can enable a follower only to realize that the possibility of enlightenment, enlightenment exists. He cannot provide enlightenment himself. So, the follower must experience the revelation from himself or herself, which in a way renders a teacher useless. The process of reaching enlightenment is internal. So Siddhartha knows this already. He cannot become one of Gautama's followers. By the time uh, we come to the fourth chapter titled Awakening, Siddhartha, as he walks away from Govinda, realizes that he is embarking on a new stage of life. He has walked away from all his teachers. First, he walked away from his paternal house. Next, he walked away from the Samanas. He walked away even from Lord Buddha because they cannot teach the nature of the self. He feels he has truly become a man. He believes his path to nirvana will not come from following another person's perspective lifestyle. Instead, Siddhartha feels sure that his path to enlightenment will come from within himself. Thus resolved, his new task will be to discover how to find this enlightenment. And Siddhartha decides to learn from himself alone. As he walks, Siddhartha sees his surroundings as real and beautiful rather than as an illusion that causes suffering. For the first time, Siddhartha is experiencing the world on its own terms rather than scorning what it has to teach him. This is his awakening. Siddhartha decides to start anew on his quest for enlightenment, the realization that is completely alone. He has left his father, the Samanas. He has left Govinda with the yellow robe men. He can no longer define himself in relation to other men because he has no community. So awakening chapter encapsulates the revelation that Siddhartha has learned from his experiences in the preceding chapters. Enlightenment cannot be reached by relying on teachers or by ignoring the world. This chapter marks the end of one phase of Siddhartha's quest. The next part of his quest takes him away from the spiritual world into the material world. Awakening gathers the import of the first few chapters, crystallizes them within Siddhartha's mind and shows how they act as catalysts for revelation prompting Siddhartha to move forward into the material world. 
he can no longer ignore the material world his imminent investigation of the material world and the knowledge he will gain from this investigation will be just as important as the knowledge he has gained thus far from his association with teachers and religion the conclusion to awakening suggests that siddhartha's upcoming investigation into the material world is a continuation of a correct path toward enlightenment thus hesse conveys to the reader that siddhartha's optimism is correct and that the next step will bring him closer to his goal so let us try to recapitulate what we have learned through this session in this session part 1 was critically analyzed the four chapters were dealt in detail to sum it up in siddhartha of the protagonist life parallels little of buddha's history even though siddhartha practices participates in holy sacrifices meditation practices and discussions with the adult brahmins he is not satisfied he seeks enlightenment otherwise known as inner peace and feels that he has learned all that he can from his teachers and books he seeks permission from his father to join the samanas the self denial of the samanas isn't enough to enlighten him enlighten him he has learned that timelessness cannot be found apart from the self rendering the samanas teaching useless for him siddhartha and govinda have spent 3 years with the samanas they learn of a man named gotama buddha who has achieved enlightenment while siddhartha recognizes the buddha's holiness he believes enlightenment must be experienced not taught siddhartha realizes that all religions offer specific formulas for reaching enlightenment just as all teachers offer knowledge couched in terms of their own experiences and so he cannot rely on any individual religion or teacher in his search of enlightenment awakening encapsulates a revelation that is the fourth chapter that siddhartha has learned from his experiences in the preceding chapters enlightenment cannot be reached by relying on teachers or by ignoring the world references used for this session in the next session the remaining eight chapters will be critically analyzed thank you